breaking news today. President Barack Obama makes major announcement today about your Second Amendment rights. He announces executive action, and in his words, he's calling it to reduce gun violence and make our communities safer. Good evening and welcome to 630 Point of View. I'm Chris Berg. Thanks so much for joining us. Now, before we get into some of the details of President Obama's executive actions regarding guns, I just want to take a moment, and for those of you at home tonight, just take a moment here and say, hey, if, if you were to make our community, your community safer, what would you do? If you were going to draft something up, what would that look like? Because I think we all can agree here that we want safer communities. We want less gun violence, obviously, in different parts of our nation. The big question is, is how do we get to that point? I'm going to share with you some thoughts and ideas of my own about that in just a few moments. But let's start with a few items that are in the president's announcements today. He has included everything from expect, expanded gun, background gun uh, checks, better smart gun technology, uh, more resources for mental health, and much, much more. Obviously, you can check it out online. But I want to start with the expanded resources for people with mental health issues. The administration is now proposing a new $500 million investment to increase access to mental health. We've talked about it a ton on this show in the past. This is a good thing. There needs to be more done in the area of mental health to try and prevent people with a high propensity for violence, obviously to not be able to go out there and get a gun to kill somebody. I think we all can agree with that. But here's, here's the thing we've got to be careful about. And this is what we all need to be aware of here. Who or what bureaucrat or panel of bureaucrats is going to ultimately determine your mental health status to the point that it could infringe upon your Second Amendment rights. I'm going to give you a quick example here. In the president's executive actions, your doctor that you're going to go see can essentially defy HIPAA, which is, in other words, your patient-doctor privacy agreement. And if the doctor feels you could be dangerous to yourself or somebody else, he or she now can pick up the phone, call the FBI, put you on a list that will prevent you prevent you from buying a firearm, basically squashing your Second Amendment rights. This doctor now can do this with absolutely no legal repercussions and obviously gives you no due process. So now we you know, may have people, believe it or not, that aren't going to go see a doctor because they might be afraid of eventually, essentially being stripped of their Second Amendment rights. There's one hypothetical situation. Also, this one is shocking to a lot of people. If you are on Social Security, and again, if a bureaucrat or a panel of bureaucrats deems you unable to manage your own affairs, might be something as simple as balancing your checkbook or uh, something that potentially could be benign, you again can be put on a list that will strip you of your Second Amendment rights. You not only will not not be able to purchase a gun in this situation, you also, if you, could t if you have any guns at this time, will have your guns confiscated from your home, out of your possession. How's that one land with you? Another important aspect of these executive actions, if you at home, let's say you've got maybe a gun you've been collecting for quite some time, something you've had in the family, if you want to give this gun to your son or your daughter, maybe your grandson, granddaughter for that matter, you now will not be able to simply hand this gun over to them. You're going to have to go out and get what's called a federal firearms license which can be like an 18-month process and can also, for you know, some people, could be a fairly expensive process as well. Here's another thing. President Obama wants to improve smart gun technology. Again, sounds good, but this is where, uh, if you're not familiar with smart gun technology, essentially like where your gun's going to recognize maybe a ring, uh, a bracelet, something to that effect in order for it to work, kind of like maybe a Bluetooth situation, if you will. But here's the thing. How many of us would agree that, you know, the rapist out there, the criminal, probably isn't going to wait until your smart gun connects so it can actually work? Oh, yeah, hold on a second, buddy. Just give me a second here. Let me get this gun connect until you actually, you know, rob me or rape me. Another interesting point about smart gun technology a lot of people are talking about is that many people are saying when you add the smart gun technology to these guns, it makes the gun so expensive that it potentially can become cost prohibitive for poor people to own a firearm. Again, thus infringing upon your Second Amendment rights. There's more to his executive actions, and what I'd like to do tonight is just really find out, you know, if you want to go and, and, and put all these laws and executive actions in place, you know, that might sound great to a lot of people, might appease a lot of people who have gone through some of these struggle, struggles or have a loss of loved ones. At the end of the day, and, and no matter where you stand on the gun issue, I think we all can agree, you can't just simply legislate or dictate what goes on in a person's heart. 
again, we all want less violence in our society. The thing is, is I think we need to start to focus on solving the heart problem in our nation, not a bunch of more laws. I'm going to give you a very basic example here of what I'm talking about, but think about how simple this is. But then when you hear the results, the net result impact, to me, it's pretty stunning. They went into Chicago. They did a very vast study with over 1,600 students from 13 very, very violent communities in Chicago. We all know in Chicago, a lot of gun laws there, but also a ton of homicides. This was part of a summer work program study that took place. This is over a 16-month period. For 16 months, these kids were part of this. They got a summer job. They had an adult mentor, someone that actually cared about them as a person. And check this out, just from a summer job, an adult mentor, the rates of violent crime arrests, actual arrests in Chicago with these students decreased by 43%. That is absolutely stunning to me. And that's just simply from a summer job program and an adult that actually cared about these kids. I've said this a gazillion times on the show. It's the power of fathers and parents and obviously, of course, something as simple as a job. Now, is that the end-all, be-all? I'm not suggesting that. All I'm saying is that, to me, this is a bunch of Band-Aids. We've got to take a look at what's the heart situation in this country, do more to solve that problem, because none of us, none of us want to see anybody obviously die at the point of a gun. I mean, nobody, I don't think, wants to see that. If I'm getting something wrong here, let me know. But we'd love to know your thoughts at the end of the day. How do you feel about President Barack Obama's executive actions? Do you feel they're actually going to make our community safer, as he suggests, or not? You can email us, text us, communicate with us any way that sees fit for you. We're going to share some of your points of view towards the end of the show on another segment. But coming up next, we have three very special guests. There's another uh, Meet Your Muslim Neighbor open house coming up this Sunday. We're going to visit with some Muslims about that. Plus, big riffraff diplomatically between Saudi Arabia and Iran. What's going on in the Middle East? One of our next guests is actually originally from, at least his parents are, from Saudi Arabia. And again, join our conversation. Head to the website, 630pov.com. Email us, text us. We'll be right back.